What's up, friends? Lauren here. Hey, quick question. What is big, powerful, and tie-dye all over? How about this super cool galactic whale? That's right, friends. Today, I'm gonna teach you guys how to draw an orca whale jumping out of the waves surrounded by colors inspired by outer space. We're gonna learn some watercolor and drawing techniques and have a lot of fun along the way. So grab those magic wands and let's get to it. Before we dive in today's lesson, let's go over the materials that we're gonna use today. You're gonna need a piece of watercolor paper, some tape for taping down that paper, a pencil, eraser, your magic wand, of course, a cup of water, some watercolor paint, and a towel or a paper towel. All right, friends, pick up those pencils. We are starting by drawing our orca. Now, our orca whale is gonna be jumping out of the water. So I wanna draw the top of my whale towards the top of my paper. That way I have plenty of room on the page. Let's start by drawing a C curve, kind of like that. This is the top of my whale. Now draw a smaller C curve for the fin. You can go ahead and bring it back down so that's lined up with this curve. That curve is going to continue all the way down for the whole length of the orca's whale body. Orcas are huge. They are almost as big as a school bus. So we're taking up a lot of this paper here. Okay, let's go back to the top of our orca's whale. And we're gonna draw a small little line here for the mouth. It's gonna look a little bit like a dolphin's head a bit. In fact, they're a part of the dolphin family. Draw a line that's gonna curve up just a little bit and then Let's continue beneath the mouth here. I'm gonna draw a line. This is gonna be a big line. Get ready, here we go. I'm just gonna curve all the way down, getting narrower and narrower till I reach the end of this line here. It kind of looks like a big tadpole or something, but I promise it's gonna look like a whale by the time we're done with it. All right. Going back up to this line here, extend it out just a bit, and then we're going to draw one of the whale's fins. Going down, and then back up, maybe right about there. If you got that eraser close by, you can tweak any spots that you need to. Okay, this next part here is going to be some lines that are going to help show the cool different markings that orcas have. They have all these different markings and they're all unique. So it's okay if your line here looks different than mine. But I'm gonna go curve out like this and then about maybe like this and then I'll curve back like that. Again, yours can look different, but it should connect back to the body here somewhere. A lot of them also have these circles that are near their eyes. Sometimes they get mistaken for eyes, but their eyes are actually very small. Just draw a little bean shape somewhere up there. It's starting to come together. Okay, we've got another fin to draw. We'll just draw part of it poking out of the side over here. It's on the other side of our whale, so we don't need to draw the whole thing. Now, what is it missing? Oh, that's right. The tail fin, this is one of my favorite parts. They've got these amazing tail fins that kind of look like an upside down letter V, except it's curved. So the way we can do this, starting on one side, curve a line out, and then curve it back in, and then do the same thing, curving out, and then back in, something like that. How does yours look? 
Now let's draw some wave splashes because our orca is jumping out of the ocean. Some of these splashes are gonna be overlapping with my tail fin. I'm gonna start with the biggest one and it's gonna curve up and out, maybe like this, and then back in towards the ocean. And then I'm just gonna draw some smaller ones. Maybe there's another one on this side. They should all look really curvy. There's no real right or wrong here. Just no straight lines here. Maybe there's a few water droplets splashing out to the sides. Now, we're almost done drawing. The last thing we're gonna draw here is gonna be up to you. Think about how you can take this whale drawing to the next level of something out of this world. Maybe you've got a lot of space down here in the ocean where you can draw some crazy sea creatures or stars. Remember, this is a magical painting so it doesn't have to be realistic. Maybe there is a moon somewhere. This is where having something circular close by would be helpful to draw a moon or a planet. All right, let's get to it. All right, well, this is how my drawing turned out. I decided I wanted to be a magical meteor shower happening in the sky. So I added some crayon markings in different colors. I added the moon and some stars in the water that I'll paint in later. How did yours turn out? Now that our drawing is complete, it's time to start painting. Put those pencils and erasers to the side, grab that tape, and let's tape down the edges of our paper. This is going to help keep our painting in place and it'll give it a nice border when you're done with it. Okay, let's do it. Grab those magic wands, dip it in your water cup, and let's begin by covering our orca whale in a light layer of water. When we paint this today, we're going to want to be mindful of all the different sections that are going on in here. This painting is gonna take a little bit of patience because you're going to want to let certain areas dry before you paint the next area. For example, when I paint my orca, I am going to want to let it dry before I paint the sky that's around it. Otherwise, that orca is just gonna blend right in with the sky. And we don't want that. We want that orca to shine. We want this magical beast of the sea to really stand out. Now, you can paint your orca however you want. The sky is the limit here. I'm going to do some really funky tie-dye colors. And so, I want to add some water so that when I add those colors, they'll blend together a bit and create a really nice, soft, and smooth look that is perfect for an orca. 
you might decide that you want your orca to be look a little bit more realistic and just have black paint and that's okay too but I would still use the wet on wet technique so that you get a really nice smooth finish all right I've added some water it's time now to add some paint I'm gonna load up my paintbrush with some of this pink paint here I love this color Notice that whatever colors you add to the water should start to spread a bit and create some really fun textures. Maybe I'll add some purple next. Now, if you're new to watercolor, you'll hear me say the technique of wet on wet and wet on dry a lot. These are two techniques that we use a lot in my class. And they are great for creating different kinds of textures and different ways of interacting with the water and the paint on paper. All right, my orca is painted. I'm gonna let it dry, do its thing, and then I'm gonna paint something else next. I'm gonna let my orca dry a little bit more. So in the meantime, I'm going to paint the water down here below. I like to use lots of different shades of blue to try and capture the, the changing light and colors that are seen in the ocean. If you've ever gone snorkeling or worn goggles under the water, you might know exactly what I'm talking about. 
The ocean is full of life and change in colors. That is so beautiful. And watercolor does such a great job of capturing all that. I think the ocean is fascinating. The farther down you go, the more it seems like a totally different world than our own. Have you ever seen pictures of, of deep sea creatures that look more like aliens than fish? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It's crazy. They're so cool. Then there's so much that we still don't know about the deep blue sea. We're still learning a lot about orcas too. How they communicate with each other, how they form families, how they hunt. They are very intelligent and social creatures. They may not have much of a sense of smell or any at all. And they may have some tiny eyes, but they can use sound echolocation to locate objects, other sea creatures in the ocean, and not only know where they are, how big they are, how far away they are. It's really fascinating. Okay, my whale is dry to the touch and so is the water. So now I'm ready to paint the sky. I'm gonna do some of the same colors that I've been doing. Like the blues and the pinks. Oh, got a little bit on my moon. Oopsie.
All right, folks, there you have it. That is one galactic animal. I hope you had fun and I'll see you next time.